So if you want a balls to the walls action horror movie, check out the car, man. It's star studded. You got James Brolin. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's just fun. It's funny. It's a little bit campy, but it's action packed and it's suspenseful at the same time. Probably one of the better killer car movies. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Uh, the Resonator Pilsner. Today we're going to be talking about 1977's The Car. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple title. That's right. It's all you need. It's also a kind of a simple movie. The Car is directed by Elliot Silverstein and he mostly did made-for-TV movies. He did a few episodes for really notable TV series, though. He did episodes for The Twilight Zone and for Tales from the Crypt, the 90s show. Yeah, that is an awesome show, too, yeah. by the way. Love that fucking show. James Brolin is in this. He was in a movie that we covered, Amityville Horror. Kathy! He's also in Westworld, just to name two out of his huge filmography. Ronnie Cox is in this, and he was in our, one of our favorite movies, which we did a parody of. Assault one of our VHS tapes at gunpoint. This is justifiable arrest if anything is. He was in Deliverance. Fuck. And he was in Total Recall, Robocop, Beverly Hills Cop. Fuck, you name you it. You name it. Even Star Trek Next Gen. Uh, that's right, yeah, yeah. R.G. Armstrong is in this too, and he was in Children of the Corn, which we did. He was also in Evil Speak, which we did a review on. Kylie Richards is in this, and just a little kid here but she's only a year older later in Halloween. And she's also in Eaten Alive. Car starts off, see these two kids on a bike and they're kind of like on the highway. They're like out in the middle of nowhere, almost like the desert. And then you hear this like honking. Slowly, this car starts getting closer and closer to them and they're pedaling their asses off because <laughs> it's like gonna run them over. And they got those super 70s race bikes yeah, too. Yeah, and they're just pedaling their asses off. <laughs> 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 he inhaled all his foam. The car like smears this one kid and then the other kid's still biking his ass off and you can see the bumper of the car just like grazing the back tire of this yeah. bike and this kid's like ah! and then woo, runs him right off this bridge and the kid <laughs> flies off with his bike off this bridge. <laughs> We're then introduced to Wade and Lauren, and Wade is captain of the police in this small town. And he's got a wicked mustache, too. And Lauren is his girlfriend. She's also a school teacher. And we kind of find out that his previous marriage has ended, and he's got these two kids he's got custody of, and he's kind of seeing the teacher on the side. <laughs> yeah. Pillow talk and role playing, <laughs> and like, I got you, Kappa. Yeah. And yep. she all grabs his balls. <laughs> 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 you can't see it, but you you know because his reaction and she's grabbing it, she's squeezing tighter. <laughs> what kind of foreplay is that? <laughs> Grab man's balls and it fucking hurts. Just crush him. <laughs> we then see this hitchhiker that's sitting on the side of the road and he's got this horn with him. He's playing this fucking French horn thing, bugging the guy who lives right by. You can hear the inhabitants arguing, and then they kind of fly out of the door and, ah, you, you don't tell me what to do in my house. And he's all like getting mad at his wife and like hits her and everything. He's like, Jesus. And then even this hitchhiker calls him out. He's like, well, what are you doing hitting a woman? He's like, well, that's my wife. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's supposed to make it all better. That makes it okay. <laughs> It's okay, it's my wife. So they go inside and the hitchhiker is left there, he's kind of packing up his stuff and then you hear the car come. And it drives over this hitchhiker and then like backs over him and drives over him again and keeps driving over this hitchhiker and then takes off. <laughs> Fuck, there's some anger there. It's like, man. So the cops are called over and they start interrogating Amos and they're trying to get him to describe the car and he's like, you can't because there's all dusty and he didn't get a good look. Uh, 
all he could really tell him was there was a black car with no plates and that's kind of all they have to go with here. In the meantime, they find the bodies of these bikers on the side of the road and one's like down in the gorge from being thrown off the bridge. They figure that this is the same person who killed the hitchhikers and also killed the bikers and there's somebody out there with this black car killing people. We're at the cop shop now and Amos's wife is there and she's all black and blue. I guess he fucking took the boots to her. Fuck, big time. And she's refusing to say it was him. Yeah. And the sheriff is like, you tell us a soft spot for her. He's like, all you gotta do is say it was him. That's all you gotta do. We'll put him away. She's not saying anything. Get in the car and he's all, <laughs> I'm going drinking with the boys. <laughs> He goes walking to the bar, and then the sheriff, too, tells the boys, oh, let's go get a whiskey at the bar. <laughs> yeah. So they're all kind of walking across the street together, and then these headlights turn on. The car is parked down the street, drives, and swerves Amos, drives over the sheriff. Back at the cop shop after all of this, they're kind of going through some of the witnesses, and there's this one native woman who noticed everything, and she ends up telling the cops that there was nobody driving the car. Lauren, who's in charge of this parade rehearsal, all the kids are marching in this field and everything, they're playing the instruments. And... Super not playing the instruments. <laughs> yeah, it kind of looks yeah, like one they kid's are, super but... not playing, not even blowing. <laughs> There's this cop that's kind of standing watch over them, and they show the cop, and you see in the background, like, this light shimmering, reflecting, you know, and you see this dust, and all of a sudden you hear the horn again, eh, 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 and it drives into this rehearsal, like into the middle of it, and starts doing donuts all around and shit, and starts kind of chasing after everybody, like all the kids. And everybody kind of gets together and then they run into this cemetery. And the car drives at like full speed towards them, towards the opening of the cemetery, and then stops dead right before. And it seems like it just can't go any further. It can't get into the cemetery. So Lauren is like, well, naturally you'd think somebody's driving, right? So she's like starting to taunt the car. Oh, you ain't anything, you're nothing, you're just a fraidy cat. Starts giving the car shit. And the car is fucking mad, like, <laughs> yeah. he's pissed. Like, you hear the engine all revving, and yeah. he, like, hits one of the pillars of the opening, and it collapses, and the cops end up coming to sort of help him out, and the car takes off, and the cops chase the car, and they end up chasing the car up into the hills, and one of the cop cars sort of boxes in the car, and then just pushes the car right off the cliff. Like, the, it starts blowing up. Like, <laughs> even before it goes off the cliff, it starts blowing up, like, right away. Two cop cars driving towards it, and, like, the car does this, like, crazy-ass move where it, like, skids, and then goes into a roll and rolls through the two cop cars. <laughs> yeah. And like takes them out and then writes itself again and drives off. It's like fucking crazy. But who is coming to confront the car is Wade on his motorcycle. And he pulls right up to the car and the car stops. Wade slowly gets closer to the car and the car door opens. It like clicks open and like Wade gets closer to see inside and the door opens all the way and knocks Wade to the ground and knocks him out completely. Lauren's at home and there's this painting of Wade in the corner. Yeah, you know? She's <laughs> working on some painting of James Brolin. <laughs> it's a good painting yeah. actually. It's very funny though. <laughs> She phones Wade, and the car keeps getting closer and closer in the distance, and it drives right through her fucking house and, like, through her and everything, <laughs> like, takes her out. Wade, he goes home. He goes into the garage to get something and turns around. What's there? The car. Just waiting for him. And that's where we're going to end it. So if you want to see what happens to Wade and the car and the rest of the town, keep watching the car. Yeah. <laughs> So why should you watch the car? <laughs> the car is one reason to yeah. watch the car. Yep. The car is awesome. Like, I wish I had a car like that that was, you know, look badass and, well, number one, reliable. We uh, always buy these beaters all the time. Yeah, it left us stranded in that terrible neighborhood after that Comic-Con. Man, we really lucked out today. Great haul of movies and toys at the convention.
Oh no! Something's wrong with the car! This is a bad part of town. I don't like the looks of that bum over there. You might want to take our tapes, or even worse, ask us for change. Can you spare some change? Adam, I need this car started in three minutes or we're all dead. Are you out of your fucking mind? You're not going out there? Sorry, Justin. I have no time to discuss this logically. Remember. Remember what? Can you spare some change? You can't get away from the depths of the dumpster. I stab at thee. Spare some change, or I spit my last breath at thee. Would you happen to be looking to purchase a VHS tape. You'll flood the whole engine compartment. She's dead already. Tapes, out of danger. Yes. The needs of the tapes outweigh the needs of the few. Or the one I never took shop class. What do you think of my solution? I am. And she'll always be your friend. Until next time, keep drinking. No. We are gathered here today to pay respects for our honored dead. And though it should be noted, his death takes place in the shadow of these rare VHS tapes. Of my best friend, all I can say is this. Of all the VHS tape collectors I've encountered, his collection was the most human. Walk home! You took all my tapes! As a character in the movie, as the bad guy, it's pretty fucking badass, man. That's right. Like, just the look of the thing. 1971 Lincoln Continental Mark III. That was, of course, you know, redesigned a bit to, to look a bit more menacing. It's a badass looking car, and it's like, you even see it, and you're like, yeah, I don't want to fuck with that. <laughs> it's badass in its simplicity, too, yeah. right? It's yeah. so sleek and simple. What I always figured that, like, the Batmobile should be. Mm -hmm. As they, in the later movies, it turned into a tank and shit, where it got too ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Like, it should, no, the, it's sleek and simple, like, just like the car, That's right? right, yeah. The sounds that the car make, too, are awesome. That train horn, that's super loud, it's like menacing on its own, right? Yep. It's kind of, it speaks for the car. That and the engine revs too. It's a loud fucking car, man, yep. and powerful. And the way they keep the car a mystery throughout the movie is great too. Like in the beginning of the movie, 
you don't really see it so much because it's in the middle of nowhere and this gravel roads it's all dust and you just see like this dust cloud mm -hmm. in a bit of the car you know and then later on there's a bit more of a reveal of what the thing looks like and like man that thing's fucking badass looking <laughs> yeah and then you're like well who's driving the car that's the other mystery mm -hmm. and then they kind of Develop that a little bit, like you know, that native woman saying, "Well, I didn't see anyone driving the car," and now, oh, there's more mystery now. Yeah, no plates. There's no handles on the outside of the doors. Yeah, like, so like the, the car in itself is a, it's shrouded in mystery, which is great. And the characters in this movie are all top notch. They're all distinct. They all have their part to play. They all have really cool sort of backstories as well that you kind of learn. Ronnie Cox's character is like a pretty secondary character yeah but like he has a story arc that's kind of throughout the movie where he's like sober and then all this crazy stuff starts happening in the town deaths that he can't really you know handle then he starts falling off the wagon and drinking but then he's got to get back sober again like yeah for a secondary character that's pretty in-depth stuff you yeah know? yeah same with amos's character too oh yeah. he's this like wife beating asshole you know and, and then and he's kind of at odds with the town and with the cops yeah and then he's got to help the cops out yeah at the end you know? because yeah. he's like a demolitions expert he knows how to use the dynamite and all that <laughs> stuff so he's got to help you yeah. know yeah. it's almost like the theme of the movie is like community mm -hmm. and like how tragedy and deaths and stuff like that in the community bring the community together. Mm -hmm. Even the wife-beating asshole has to play his part yeah. in trying to f solve this problem, which is, I think, what the movie's kind of saying about community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or else they're all fucked. Yeah, you have to work as a whole to solve the mm -hmm. problem, or else you're all doomed. <laughs> That's you're <right>. all doomed. <laughs> And the acting is great too, and it's a funny thing, when this movie first came out, critics shit all over it, and they mm -hmm. said it was a stupid movie, which kind of is, and the plot's pretty silly, but the acting, I would disagree, they said that the acting was horrible. Horrible? I think no. that the acting in this movie's pretty damn good, and in no. fact, it helps you believe such a stupid, silly premise with this killer car. Like, yeah. no, it's the acting which makes this silly plot believable and they're all top-notch guys like come on James oh yeah rolling ronnie cox like there's star-studded movie yeah you know and a lot of suspense in it which is really good just like on that hill scene where it's creeping closer and closer to that cop car and then like the cop opens his door and the car slowly pushes it closed yeah you know it's like that's suspenseful. It's like, what is the car going to do? Yeah. And the scene where James Brolin has the standoff with oh, it in the side of the hill. And then the scene in the garage. Like, yeah. That scene in the garage is like textbook suspense. Even before the car does anything. You know, just when he sees the car parked in his own garage. And there's that, cup, there's that moment there where it's like, is yeah. there anyone in it? Is it going to turn on? Is it just parked here? What's gonna happen? And then when it does turn on, then it it even gets more suspenseful, yeah. right? Because yeah. it doesn't do anything right away. It takes its time. Yeah, it kind right? of toys with James yeah. Brolin, right? Yeah. He rides a motorcycle too, yeah. right? He doesn't drive a car, of course. Yeah. It's a motorcycle. He's the only person on the police force that rides a motorcycle. That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right away there's a bit of a, uh, a dynamic there between the two that it it paints James Brolin as a great adversary for yeah. the car. And he can do things the car can because he's on a motorcycle, That's right. right? Yeah. Pacing in this movie is fantastic, too. Like, it starts off with that action-packed opening scene with the bikers. Yeah. And then it kind of gets into the story of it. You get introduced to the characters. Then it doesn't get boring because then you get introduced to the car again. The car does something crazy. Right. And then there's a bit more story and character building. And then the car comes back. So the car is always kind of there to break things up a bit and make mm -hmm. things exciting so it's not just all character building and plot you know and yeah it's, it's, it's perfectly done and we got to mention the music or lack thereof because there really isn't a whole lot in this movie but one of the more notable pieces of music in this is right from the beginning it's taken from the fifth part of symphony fantastique and actually it's the same piece of music that opens with the shining just a little different, of course, yeah. but... Instantly recognizable. Exactly. And this movie did it before The Shining. Yeah. 
And besides that, there isn't much music. In fact, most of the music in this movie, music is the sound of the car. Yeah. It's kind of the, mu- the, the movie soundtrack. The honking and the engine. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of all you need, really, because it, it, it's pretty unnerving, that mm-hmm. damn honking and, and the engine is like, ooh, like that thing's going to get me. And this movie has a wicked payoff, too, for the ending. It's got a crazy ending. It's like, and it starts from the garage scene, and it just works its way from there, and it just fucking ramps up. Just as it's supposed to. Yeah, it's pretty action-packed. Car chases, explosions, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And, and then after that, there's a bit of a tease as to, oh, what's next for the car? <laughs> yeah, because you don't really, you just hear that it's buried or yeah. whatever. You don't know that it's dead, necessarily. Yeah. So if you want a balls-to-the-walls action horror movie, check out the car, man. It's star-studded. You got James Brolin rocking a fucking wicked mustache. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's funny. It's a little bit campy, but it's action-packed, and it's suspenseful at the same time. Yep. And it's probably one of the better killer car movies, you know? It's up there with Christine. It's not as serious as Christine, but it's just as fun. So check out 1977's The Car. Until next time, keep drinking. And driving. <laughs> The car.